Hello and welcome to Reinfuse. Today we are taking a look at this, which is the Electron. Uh, this is a, a cut down version of the BBC Micro released, of course, by Acorn. And this eventually came out in 1983, although uh, at least a year after it was uh, originally planned to come out. Now, if you know the BBC Micro, it was uh, an immensely popular educational computer is probably the best way of saying it. it was part of um, the BBC uh, computing course series of programs and was chosen as the main computer for that task. And so it was also sold cheaply into a lot of schools and what have you as well. And so it became very popular in schools for uh, and a lot of children grew up under understanding how to use them and know them. And so Acom were hoping that was going to translate into lots of home cells where parents would hear about them using these BBC Micros, and then would decide to get one for the home. By and large, that didn't happen for various reasons. The um, BBC Micro was a very expensive machine, comparatively, and it's just, yeah, it just never really um, took off. And with the likes of the Sinclair Spectrum, uh, the Commodore 64 and uh, Amstrad CPC range, it didn't really ever make an impact. Now, when uh, Sir Clive first announced the Spectrum, uh, Acon realized that the Micro needed to be cheaper to really compete with that. And so uh, that's when they started designing the Electron. And so the Electron is cut down in, in a lot of ways. Some of it are more to do with uh, improved processes. So a lot of the, the way the ULAs and stuff are designed, the specialized chips to do lots of functions. That helped. Uh, there's a lot of stuff cut out as well. They The biggest change probably which affected it most is they cut the bus bit, the bus size down from 8-bit to 4-bit. And that, so even though this has got the same processor uh, pretty much as the, as the BBC Micro, it, it still runs everything slower. So even though it was technically, technically compatible with all of the BBC Micro software, Anything that would run on this was uh, would run a lot slower. There are also a few modes missing as well. The BBC Micro had several modes that it could run software in, and this is missing quite a few, including a few that were heavily used by games. So that's another reason why a lot of the software didn't run. But it still had a lot of software that did run on it, and a lot of its own software as well that was uh, especially made for the uh, Electron platform. And in, if you look at, especially nowadays, with people making demos, as a quite a few people on uh, YouTube and on Twitter who are making demos for the Electron and some of them are genuinely impressive. Uh, I will put some links in my description because yeah, some of them are, some of those YouTube channels really do, do deserve a look at because of some of the work they've done. Um, yeah, this was, a, it was a good machine, but it was just kind of a bit a too little, too late for Acorn when the, this came into the market the Spectrum really still already had a stranglehold. Uh, its price point was pretty much spot on and it had, uh, it had been kind of a primary choice really for, uh, for British parents. And, uh, yeah, and that's ignoring when the Commodore 64 came over with already a fairly good, uh, range of software and support from, uh, its American release, uh, so yeah, it's uh, with the price not being that much different, it really didn't stand a huge amount of a chance. Which is a shame, like I say, it's not a terrible machine by any means. In fact, the Boosie Micro is a very good machine as well, but again, price points. Now, one of the main ways that this is uh, vastly different to the Boosie Micro is literally in the size. This is uh, about, I'd say, pretty safe to say, less than half the size of a BBC Micro. It's more or less the same width, a little bit, give or take, uh, but just vastly. I mean, the yeah, the Electron, unfortunately, mine is buried, so I can't. <laughs> yeah, but if, uh, but if you put it here, I think the, the Electron base, the uh, BBC Micro would end up about here, more or less. So yeah, this is this is quite a bit smaller. Uh, with that came a lot of things uh, changes. There's obviously um, this the BBC Micro had a built-in power supply. This doesn't, although bearing in mind the filter caps always go on that thing. That's not a terrible thing by any means. So instead of the built-in power supply, uh, it has this Woolwort, which uh, 
It's a bit more convenient, plus it means you can use an alternative if uh, this does have problems. Although uh, this does seem to have been, well certainly for me, fairly reliable. Now the other way it was cut down was in the number of ports. The BBC Micro is probably infamously uh, port capable. It's got just everything you can think of. Uh, there's a way to plug it in with a really good serial ports, a tube port for a second processor, all kinds of things. This really, it's got this expansion port on the back, which we'll discuss in a minute. It's got the uh, cassette RGB uh, composite and uh, a UHF, so RF style uh, connector on the side. And obviously the power port is on that side and that's really it. But that back expansion port did give some uh, benefits and there are numerous add-ons that, that you can use. Uh, this is one of them. So this is the plus one and this gives us well a printer port but also uh, an analog joystick port and two cartridge ports as well which is really interesting. There was quite a bit of cartridge software available as well. Um, this guy it goes in the back and then it's got two screws which go into these holes here and here which uh, gives it really like a robust feel and it, I don't generally take this off it just feels like part of the unit when it's actually connected now this is yellowed quite a bit as you can probably work out if we look on the bottom you can really see what the actual color is I think, uh, it's a really good area where you can see the difference not unless you look at the corner on the, the rolling edge of that plastic and the white on the back that's really where the difference is so this, white, this was much closer to uh, a slightly off-white, well, an ivory white maybe, than uh, this browny, yellowy, almost nicotine colour <laughs> this thing is now. <laughs> Obviously a uh, proper keyboard, just like the BBC Micro, which was a massive advantage over, well, should have been a massive advantage over the Spectrum, but again, um, as the Spectrum was mostly used for games and there were joystick ports available for it, uh, cut interfaces, it didn't really uh, make that huge amount of difference. But uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I do like this. I probably prefer the BBC Micro just because I own one. But in terms of 8-bit uh, machines, this was a really good machine. It did have some good games, not enough, obviously, because the support just wasn't there. But... It's uh, it's definitely got a huge place, especially in the BBC uh, computer market. It was kind of the important second big computer from from Acom after the BBC Micro. So they had a few before then, including the Atom. But really, the Micro was their their kind of stamp point where they they said, you know, we are one of the main players in this industry. And the Electron was their was that kind of continuing story to try to try to find a place in the home. It didn't work out, but it was a, it was a brave attempt. It was a good attempt as well. I think if they hadn't have had the issues they had, because one of the big issues was when they were redesigning the ULA for this, they just had tons and tons and tons of engineering problems, and that pushed the delivery day just back and back and back. If they'd got this out in 82 when they were trying to, well, when they were first planning the machine or not long afterwards, then... I think it would have had a much more of a chance because it was certainly more powerful than the Spectrum. I mean, slightly less memory, obviously 32K, but there weren't that many games at the beginning of the Spectrum's life that really utilised 48K anyway. So, uh, yeah, it's a real shame, but uh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a look at some games now. Um there are some favourites on there, and I'm going to include uh, Bandits at 3 o'clock, which is one of my personal favourites, and one I used to play uh, quite a lot after school with my friend Paul, who did own an, an Acorn Electron. I was a specky boy, as I've said many times, but uh, it's still fun to play on other machines. Right. Actually, you know what? In terms of, <laughs> in terms of dead machines, Paul also had a, after the Electron, had a Commodore Plus 4, so he really, his family really did bet on the outside chances, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Right, we're back in a minute with some games. Okay, here we are then. This is the Acorn Electron. And it looks, uh, if you know the BBC Micro, it looks very, very similar. And uh, indeed, it mostly is, of course, because it, it's basically the same operating system. Uh, if we hit controller break, it resets, just like on the BBC Micro. And yeah, our only real difference is our nice little uh, Electron uh, and our Acorn symbol there, which is uh, kind of nice. Load games from tape the same way using chain. Now... 
I, unfortunately, <laughs> have no solid state solution for the electron. So we are going to have to uh, load it old fashioned using actual, well, still tape images, but there will be no faster than loading it up using a tape drive. So this should be fun. Right. So load by doing chain. There we go. And then if we start playing. There we go. <laughs> I will, of course, fast forward past most of this. One thing, uh, the Electron, like many computers of its time, it, it does have the ability to stop and start tapes, um, which obviously we don't get when we're running this through a laptop. So I have to remember to stop <laughs> the tape whenever I hear it click. Anyway, we will fast forward past the loading. Okay, so... <laughs> Nine minutes later, let's uh, see if we can actually play. Right, so we're there should be one player now. Yep, so now we get attacked by the bad guy. We do have uh, a few different moves. Oh, I don't remember how to do many of them. Oh, there's a rolling. You can do the rolling. There we go. Don't remember how to kick. And as you can see, the uh, we have kind of health bars at the top. If you remember rightly, like on some of the versions, the snakes changed colour depending on how much energy you had left. Fortunately, the computer is very defensive, so you can't get the uh, decapitation moved. Oh, we did it! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we decapitated the computer. Excellent. So here we are. We've now loaded up Bandits at 3 o'clock. And then this was indeed the game that me and my friend Paul used to play for hours, which um, is probably going to come as a surprise once you see it running. Now, uh, the sound for the Electron actually comes out of the actual Electron itself uh, through a speaker. So, yeah, it's about to get quite noisy. <laughs> I won't try to compete with it too much, but, uh, yeah, yeah you'll, you'll hear the noise definitely. Right, so um, fairly simple uh, menu screen. We can get, change some of the stuff here, turn things on and off. I've set it to one player. If we push start now, it will actually go. Again, very, very simple game. Uh, yeah, there's our scenery. <laughs> the cloud, which you can hide in if you're trying to do... Uh, and the church in the middle. And if you just push the fire button, which is X, and then I, on my side, have A and Z to go up and down. Ooh. I've never really... I don't think I've played against a computer before on this. Oh, missed. <laughs> I mean, you kind of get the point. <laughs> Pretty sure I, I shot him, but hey... <laughs> the computer appears uh, to not not really be firing back. <laughs> you definitely can hit them normally, so hey, there we go. <laughs> Now, even better, <laughs> when you die, you get a little gravestone on your side. So, technically, it gets a little bit harder because you've got less of a runway to take off. <laughs> oh, the lovely little animation of the pilots running to the plane as well. <laughs> this game brings back such memories. It's, just, it's an astonishing simple game, but... Ooh, almost hit the flag. But it's uh, it was fun, especially in multiplayer. Not so much uh, against the computer, because the computer really doesn't seem interested in fighting back. But, yeah, a fun game all the same. <laughs> right, uh, let's go to another game. And here we are, Elite. Of course, we have to load up Elite. It's uh, the big it's big brother computer. The BBC Micro is considered to have the best 8-bit version of this game. Um, probably. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I mean, it probably is. <laughs> so you kind of you have to play it, but as you can see, it handles it more or less as well. So uh, we don't want to load a command, no. So we just do n. Accepting that in. There we go. Um, do I remember the keys? That's the question. Oh, there we go. <laughs> We've got out. So uh, the keys. What are the keys? Oh, there's fire. Oh, there we go. That's we've managed to rotate. <laughs> oh, there we go. We have right. We have your control and rotate. That's all we need, really. So there you go. This is elite. If we just uh, start attacking this base here, we'll get to see what some of the ships look like. <laughs> and there you go. There's a bit of slowdown. Quite a bit of slowdown. <laughs> but that's not too bad. Considering um, the speed, speed difference between this and its big brother. That's not bad at all. <laughs> so there you are. That's quite impressive, really. I feel I'm quite impressed by that. Right, so that's the Acorn Electron and some of its games. Uh, I really love the Electron. It's one of my favorite machines. Um, obviously, like I said, I kind of prefer its Big Brother for various reasons, and not least the fact that I've got a, a, an SSD solution for it. But but this is still a, a fantastic little machine, and it's so compact compared to its brother. Even with the uh, add-on on the back, it's still far smaller than its uh, Big Brother. It takes up a lot less space. In fact, it fits on my desk with the monitor, which is uh, always good. So yeah, it's a... It's a great machine. It's, it's certainly worth getting. Um, they are pretty reliable. The thing that tends to go most is the keyboard. So um, that might require taking apart and cleaning. Mine probably does at some point, actually. But uh, other than that, they're pretty reliable machines. Right. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like. If you really enjoyed the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't enjoy the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. See you next time.